What's up, everybody? This is John Odermatt, the host of Felony Friday. And before we get rolling into today's show, I want to take a quick moment to talk about coffee. That's right, coffee. The Lions of Liberty, we have partnered up with Anarcho Coffee, and we are selling our very own coffee. It's called the Morning Roar. It is a medium dark roast that has cupping notes of lemon lime, caramel, black pepper, and brown sugar. It is delicious. You can pick up some of this coffee by going to lionsofliberty.com slash coffee. We have a way there on your first purchase. You can get 10% off, but if you join the Pride for $10 and up, you can actually get more than that. You can get 15% off every single order. Buy some coffee support the Lions of Liberty, support another great libertarian company as well. Everybody wins. Lionsofliberty.com slash coffee. Welcome to Felony Friday, a presentation of the Lions of Liberty podcast. Here is your host, John Odermatt. Felons, friends, and freedom lovers, welcome back to another edition of Felony Friday, a weekly show right here on the Lions of Liberty podcast. No intro this week. We're cutting right into the show. This is the 176th episode of Felony Friday. Show notes can be found at lionsofliberty.com slash FF176. And this is an episode of Libertarians in Living Rooms Drinking Liquor, talking about felonies. And I'm joined by... Maybe two of the favorite Lions of Liberties? I don't know. Other than myself, I think they're up there. <laughs> There's only six. <laughs> has, there been, has there been an official ranking release? We're, we're probably also, well, I don't know. About, Howie's probably up on the list. We, should, probably, do, we should do a top five. So just up on the least favorite. So yeah. one person's left out. <laughs> you, you've heard them. There's uh, Rico, our legal counsel, and uh, the godfather, Howie Snowden. Welcome, guys. Hey. Um, I didn't realize this was a libertarians in living rooms drinking liquor. Oh, so boy. I'm going to ex- excuse myself for 10 seconds and go get a drink. There right. you go. Well, he's doing that. It's funny. Two days ago, I re- recorded a podcast with Mark and he wanted me to record the audio just in case it, 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 there was an issue. Mm-hmm. And I hit record at the beginning of that and I was drinking. I did not hit stop until just now. So 48 hours. Of- <laughs> There's probably some great audio hidden in there, Howie. You gotta well, go I mean, my, my recording sub's down in the basement, so I don't, I don't know, though. Maybe I should find out <laughs> anything going on in my basement I don't know about. So safe to say you never sent that recording to Mark, then. No, he didn't need it. It was <laughs> it was for a conspiracy corner, so he's like, okay. ah, just use the Zoom audio. Yeah, it's normally good enough. Well, that's what we use for this one. There's Rico cracking open a, what is that, a, a Bud Light? It is. I didn't have time to make a fancy mixed drink in the 10 seconds I, I was gone. Fancy mixed drink in a can right here. Oh, White Claw. Well, you're a step ahead of, you're a more, more evolved person than what all the other cider? beers that I. No, that it's a, uh, it's a seltzer or uh, a spiked, spiked water, I guess they call it. Yeah. But uh, it's delicious. I mean, people talk crap on them. Maybe they do. I don't know. Is that like a Mike's hard lemonade in a can? It's way better than that. It's basically just like drinking delicious alcohol. It doesn't have. It has okay. like. It, it sounds. Has, it sounds like a vodka and soda. It has two. Good. It has two grams of sugar and nothing else in it. Just alcohol. It's amazing. I like the old vodka and uh, soda water. Yeah, Put a couple too. berries in there for yeah. flavor. Yeah. It's like you're being hydrated and healthy. Well, I, I, I got started on it last pork fest. Like uh, if you go and order a drink, like I hate ordering a bunch of different drinks. And I, I think you got started on that at like 8 a.m. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Johnny Rock asked me to get <laughs> him a vodka and soda double. So I'm like, uh, instead of ordering a bunch of drinks, I'm like two vodka soda doubles. <laughs> and it's <laughs> and they just kept coming and coming and coming. So you were passed out in a truck. Yeah. Get your VIP tickets, kids. <laughs> <laughs> To, yeah. I guess to be clear, the, the truck is not in the VIP area. Anyone can sleep in the truck, right? Right. It was kind of like halfway between the podcast recording area and the VIP area. Whatever. Uh, I, I, I need a little. Oh, was it? It was right behind the VIP yeah, tent. It was, it was just a random U-Haul that was set up right there. But yeah, you guys and your memories, whatever. <laughs> we can uh, spin this story any way you want. Okay, so this is uh, Felony Friday, right? This is Libertarians in Living Rooms Drinking Liquor. 
So what do you guys want to talk about? I mean, the one thing that I've really been wanting to talk about is like I listen to a lot of Scott Adams. I don't know if you guys listen to his podcast at all. It's basically him just ranting about Trump for an hour every day. And uh, he was talking about how Bill Barr, I'm not going to pull up McWilliams, call him Bob Barr. Bill Barr <clears throat> has to be getting so much pleasure out of opening an investigation into the people who started the investigation into Trump's, uh, into the Russia collusion hoax. So I guess a couple questions here. Like, what do you guys see? Where do you see this going? Do you see... You know, do, do you think there's anything really behind this? Do you think we'll see like a, a James Comey or a, or a Clapper end up in prison? Um, or do you think this is just going to be another waste of time with a, another report that causes another, you know, ridiculous, stupid hearings in Congress that really mean nothing? So one thing about him getting pleasure, I don't know if you saw, I, I guess there's something where he was interacting with Pelosi and he asked, he's like, hey, did you bring your handcuffs? So yeah, he's trying yeah. to like hold him in contempt. <laughs> <laughs> you said that to Pelosi. Yeah, yeah. They had I, they had something today, and it was like, you you know, so they're they're trying to hold him in contempt, and it's like, really, you're going to go arrest the attorney general, um, the FBI, and the Attorney General sure has a lot of guns. But so uh, you got to know he has absolutely zero fear of being but, held in but, contempt. But the funniest yeah, thing I mean, to me though is like, they're like, you need to give us the whole unredacted Mueller report where the redacted parts, like it would be illegal for him to do that. So it's he's, insane. He's like, go yeah. ahead, go ahead. Give me the like thing from Congress telling me to commit a crime. Send yeah. it, send that out. <laughs> Let me get that. And we'll. Yeah. The special counsel regulations and the federal rules of uh, criminal procedures, specifically bar release of um, grand jury proceedings or testimony, yeah. whatever. And that's what they want. It's, they have to know that it's illegal. He's not going to do it. So the whole thing is for show and the like fact everything he, else. The fact that he sat before the Senate though, and like pretty much called out that they were spying on a like yeah. opponent's campaign mm -hmm. and the guy that he's put in charge of this new investigation, which apparently has been going on for a little while already. He seems like a no nonsense dude. Uh, the one thing I read that he, who is the guy, do you know, I don't, off the top of your I don't remember his name, but I remember if I can he find it. He looked into like uh, CIA, like torture and abuses. And I know we stuff about that came out. We heard it, but nothing happened to them. And I mean, I'm not holding out hopes. Anything's going to happen to like Brennan Clapper Comey and any of these fucking clowns. No, no none of these guys ever have to but actually answer for anything. I, I'm still hoping. I'm still hoping, though. I mean, Christ, if they don't. If they're not held accountable, this shit's just going to keep happening and happening. Of course, it's going to keep happening and happening. That's what the government is. It's uh, it's all just one perpetual uh, corrupt activity, whether it's you, against one side or the other. Do you guys think Trump's going to wield this power now? Like uh, they say, if you're going to take a swing at the king, don't miss. And they missed. What's yeah. he going to? And I hope some of this is part of that retribution. Not like normally I wouldn't wish that, but because they, it was an illegal coup attempt, in my opinion. I well, hope. Yeah, I, I agree. I wish they would all go down for because it's it's so improper to try to. It, it is a coup attempt. They tried to get Trump out of office because they didn't like him. Um, there, what other way there is to put it? But yeah. I, I doubt really that anyone would um, will an have to answer for it criminally. But my question that I was trying to think about is like. In a hypothetical world where one person goes down for this, like who's your what's your ranking? I think Comey is at the top of mine because he's so self righteous that I can't stand it. Like Brennan and Clapper, I, I hate them both, and they're both self righteous too. But for some reason, yeah. like Comey's uh, piety is is just great on me more than anything like his books and and how he acts like the, a defender of the realm to use a game of thrones kind of reference is this who we want to go down or who we yeah, like if you had a or who, could, who might well i know who theoretically could but if you could pick like one person that that you know is involved in this so so my thought is you want to get rid of somebody who has no power anymore. Somebody who is just like hurting everyone else still continually. Somebody who, if her and her husband are going on a speaking tour, can only sell tickets for like 10 bucks now. 
Bill, I think, Bill I and think Hillary Clinton. If I was the Democratic Party, I would throw Hillary right under the bus. Get her out of there. Don't let her jump into another election. Don't let her keep ruining everything. And I mean, she's the whole mastermind behind this whole thing. Like, if it were up to me, I would throw Hillary Clinton under the bus. But, okay, uh, that that's a fair one. I kind of forgot. I was just thinking basically of uh, Comey, Clapper, and Brennan when I was thinking of that kind of hypothetical scenario. But when you kind of step back and, and look at it for a second, it, it really was almost ingenious what Hillary and, and the Clintons tried to do to Trump. Just like demonize Russia and then start this whole conspiracy collusion angle and have it, because it, no doubt they were just like so pissed that she lost. And they just came up with this as kind of like a pen, uh you know, payback to Trump. They're like, oh, yeah. we're going to smear them and we have enough lackeys that can make this happen. Well, they, they probably thought that they'll be able to find something <clears throat> in the investigation that they would be able yeah. to blow it up. Well, well the mean, thing is, this started before he was right. elected. And if they wanted to do something, the fact that they thought there was no way Hillary would lose, they didn't cover the tracks. And people know, like, Brennan is dumb as a box of rocks. These People are idiots, and the evidence is out there. If someone in our government would do something with it, I mean, they could. They could put all these people in jail. I don't. I don't see that happening. Hopefully, maybe someone or something will happen. But I, I want to know who the the uh, FISA court judge was and what his or her thoughts on this is. Because one, the FISA court's bullshit to begin with. Mm-hmm. But just having those, there are some rules in place for it. And for the FBI to submit, this is a ver- these are verified um, facts that- Verified facts. Yeah, verified. And then for Comey to go out and say later, oh, these were unverified. Well, which one is it? Because you were the one signing off on, on the application to FISA court that they were verified. Did you see Comey and Brennan are both trying to blame each other for yeah. including like the steel shit? Yeah. Anyways, two these are two kind of un sort of related but unrelated things I learned recently that I think are kind of interesting. Wait, Howie, are, are you drinking anything? Oh yeah, yeah. You, I'm you drinking uh some dogfish head sweet sequin ale. It's a session sour. Yeah, I've had that, yeah. But uh so do you take a guess who's one of the people that testified that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction pointed at America? Clapper. Joe Biden. Mueller. Mueller. Oh, Mueller. And something else. Hey, remember when he was head of the FBI? Remember we had the financial cra- crisis in 2008? Mm hmm. Did anybody from like Goldman Sachs, AG, Bear Stearns, anyone go to jail? No. Do you know who did go to jail? Martha Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> for yeah. yeah. Trading yeah. That they couldn't prove. So she, she got, did. Yeah, she oh, didn't go for it. She went for obstruction of justice. I so think. looking at Mueller, who we have this Mueller. financial crisis, Mueller, with all this bullshit. Mueller. They, Mueller. They put. They put Martha Stewart in jail. Nobody else. He's one of the people that fucking lied us into Iraq. And it's, I'm like, I, who is this Mueller, Mueller, whatever. He's a person well, for, who, who says, he's, he's, he's a person who says what he's told to say. He p- toes the party line. I mean, you know uh, what I love about like all these guys are like, Oh, he's a, and you kind of said this about the John Durham guy. I think that was appointed by Barr. Anyone who, who looks exactly like a mix of Richard Dreyfus and Jeffrey Tucker, if you look at them. Like these guys, <laughs> these guys are always described, oh, they're straight shooters. Oh, bullshit. None of these upper echelon guys are straight shooters. Uh, Bob Barr isn't a fucking straight shooter. They all have very shady dealings. No one gets to this level of power without being a corrupt individual. To be Bar- Barr was a Bush guy, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So, so one thing that that I'm wondering, like uh, the fact that Trump's not doing anything that he said, it seems like they're manipulating him. And now you've got people like Lindsey Graham and shit backing him. Maybe they'll back him up on this though, just because they think, oh uh, yeah, let's defend Trump because we can control him. Well, you know, we we'll use this for advantage and crush the Democrats. So, if you wanted to go down a conspiracy, maybe Trump actually was guilty of something, but the people that found it or were in a position to know about it, use it to their advantage, and they're the war power, the war pigs. And they're like, tell you what, you're not going to go down, but we're not getting out of Syria. We're not uh, stopping Saudis from 
committed genocide against the Yemenis. And why don't we uh, start a war with Iran too? But we do all those things. You're, you're clear, uh, free and clear. Don't worry about anything that you did. Tell you what, that, that wouldn't surprise me. And if that were the case, if it did have him, you know, blackballed with something like that, they got a guy who's going to get reelected. So it'd have him for another four years after this. So you're talking about six years where they could yeah. have Trump in power and then start a war. So if we go to war with Iran, I mean, <laughs> oh my God, I don't even want to speculate on that. There will be so many, so many casualties. I, I don't think it's going to happen. I think that Bolton's getting fired. I think it's going to happen. That'd be that's, amazing if Bolton got fired. That, that's what I hear. That's what I hear. No, I, and I, I don't think know. If, there's going to be some type of conflict, probably not all out war, but certainly enough to justify our presence in Iraq for the next see, decade. See, I don't think so. I think that Trump got out of the Iran deal because Obama made it and he hates Obama. And I think he wanted a better deal. And I think he brought John Bolton on board to scare them into making a better deal. And now Bolton's getting him too close to real war. And he's like, fuck this. We're not having that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm too hopeful. Because here's the thing. Like before the 2016 election, I was like, I think Trump's going to win. And it's like, I'm not some genius or like clairvoyant. I was too afraid to admit my, to myself that Hillary Clinton could possibly be the president of the United States. <laughs> I like, I couldn't let that become a possibility in my mind. It's like, now, nah, now nah, Trump's going to win. And I think the same thing might be, I'm like, now nah, he's going to fire Bolton. It's it, now. So it could be some of that, but from well, whatever. about Pompeo. I mean, it's like both of them. Yeah. And, and, you know, and Pompeo is awful, but I kind of feel like Pompeo was not against the whole, maybe making peace with North Korea thing. Cause he was the head of the CIA. He got Trump started down this path. You don't think he would have done it if he didn't think there was a real way to do it. And things were moving the right direction until the last meeting when they were sitting down talking and Bolton comes in and like blows the whole thing up. Well, how could, how could you even have peace with North Korea or not peace, but how could you have, North Korea denuclearize. What is their incentive? They're like, one, the U.S. isn't trustworthy. They they could um, have a new president, and then that new president could do exactly what Trump did. All right. So so one, why do we even care if North Korea gives up their nukes? Like, all right, no, they got shouldn't. they've got a handful. They can't even hit America. So well, I mean, I, I ideally, I mean, we could, would want everyone to give up their nukes and nobody to have nukes, right? Yeah. But that's probably, I mean, Especially it's not going to happen the same way. It's not going to happen that we're not going to disarm everyone in this country and we're going to get rid of the gun violence, right? I, I, yeah, I'm not looking for North Korea to get rid of these nukes in this whole thing. I'm looking for us to normalize relations yeah. and stop whatever. But it, requiring them to denuclearize is, is a non-starter. Like, Especially after what Hillary did to Gaddafi. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's what's their reason that they would ever give up nukes? And well, we they could be desperate. I mean, their economy is basically nothing. Um, they don't have like any trade with any other countries. Oh, uh, they they so, could trade enough with China to keep the yeah. China won't let them the rulers collapse. in power. China's, China does. Yeah, they, they don't want. They're too afraid. They don't want North Korean refugees flowing over their border. Right. Um, and North Korea has been pretty good about keeping any like free flow of information from its citizens. Uh, there's a little bit now with like SIM cards or whatever they're they're getting airdropped, but oh, that's been happening for a long time. Yeah, but I mean, they're still in such. So what, what they're like dropping just like cell phones in North Korea, or yeah, people drop you know cell phones, movies, information, things like that. Can you imagine um, just picking up, just walking along, and you pick up a cell phone sitting there and. You're watching what the fuck? But so so I thought this was really interesting. So this whole thing's going on, the whole North Korea thing's falling apart. But I guess I've read this article that it's interesting. Like Trump's fighting with his advisors about the North Korea thing at the same time as supposedly Kim Jong un's getting all this backlash from his advisors and he's fighting with his advisors about it's like I, I feel like there's probably some like North Korean John Bolton like trying to torpedo yeah. things from that end. <laughs> Like nobody ever, nobody North ever Korean thinks of that, but it's like, it seems like Trump and Kim want to like do some deal and like be best buds and whatever and hang out and uh, party with Dennis Rodman. Mar Lago. I, I think, I think Kim Jong Un already got what he wanted. He wanted to meet with Trump. Um, I don't think his life is going to be any worse regardless of any sanctions. He can keep going on living the way he lives. If he really does care about his people that much, I don't think he would have all those concentration camps and 
and just brutal. Yeah, I don't think he gives a shit about his people. Yeah. He cares about power. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. And he has yeah. he has the power. And that's not yeah, going to change. That's the right. only thing. That's the only thing that would drive him to give up his nukes to you know change the situation now is if he can't sustain the power. If that balance is, if there's you know rumblings of an uprising or something like that happening in North Korea, which I, I, it's it's not going to happen. I have no idea. I'll tell you that, no. and it's partially our fault. But um, he probably doesn't want to give up his nukes because he doesn't want to be like uh, sodomized to death with a bayonet like Gaddafi. Well, I don't think we could ever. <laughs> Well, one, we can never invade North Korea, whether they have nukes or not. Their their artillery is so built up; they're just yeah, they that's destroy. The, they could destroy Seoul. They don't need nukes. Just with their artillery threat, like millions of people will die. It's like they have enough of a deterrent. We're not gonna. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. I, I think uh, North Korea they, they've made about as much progress as they ever will with them. See, see, I'm familiar with their North with their artillery threat. I used to do Intel work on North Korea and pretty much the gist of all of my papers is like war with them would be fucking awful. Don't do it. It's big mistake. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> Did you have to counter any arguments that people were like, yeah, it'll be good. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. No, the only kind of like uh, disagreements that I had with, with things that I wrote would be like, um, if I wrote something, I'd want like our allies to be able to use it, you know, but they, some people in charge only cared if the people at the Pentagon read it. And so they would have me include like highly classified shit that doesn't really make a fucking bit of difference. And so it's like, Oh, great. Well, now, we, now only like two people are going to see this. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. It's not going to help anybody out. So it was never, I was never told to like write something that I didn't think was true or anything, but it was the right. way that they, they wanted to get in front of certain audiences. They wanted to include information. It didn't necessarily have to be in there and it would just like limit the audience big time. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, let's, uh, I don't know how we got talking about North Korea. What were we shift, talking about? Bob Barr. Let's shift gears back to <laughs> us, the us criminal justice system for a minute. And uh, let's talk about quick, red quick, light cameras. Quick question for a about that, though. Being on Felony Friday. Yeah. What is a felon? Is it someone who has committed a felony or someone who's convicted of a felony? Ask well, me for a friend. I mean, <laughs> wait, what, what, what was the question? Someone who it, it is like, or? like, say, if you have committed a felony, but nobody knows about it, are you a felon? No, or is it only if you got convicted of it in a court of law? We're all felons, Howie. What's that book like? How many a Three day? Like felonies a day. Felonies a day. I, I don't know. I mean, it's, I, I mean, yeah. By the yeah, obviously, if you're talking about like a felon, felon, yeah. Some, I'm, I'm sure people who have actually been convicted and either done time in prison or paid that price don't want to be, don't want people like myself and claiming you know, the title, well, cl- claiming that that we're felons too and have gone through the same <laughs> thing. So I would say for for that, you know, th- those people are real felons. They're the ones you know suffering yeah. from the stigma. You know, they can't get jobs, can't get housing, all that stuff. Yeah, we um, may be but, felons, but we're not putting it on our mortgage applications. Exactly. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Question answered. So speaking of felons, there's a dude that I'm actually trying to get on the show. I might get him on the next couple of weeks. You guys probably know him or have heard of him. He's known as uh, Red Light Robin Hood. Uh, Stephen Ruth, he's the guy that went, ar- went around and... Uh, it was like 37 or 40 cameras where he went around and like pulled the cords on them. Those red light cameras. He got charged with a lot of felonies. And I think it was a year or two ago. He, he uh, did a plea deal where he got off of most of it with pretty minimal charges, but he was back in court today and I couldn't really figure out why he was. So I want to have him on to talk about that, but I just want to bring it up sort of as a, uh, from a couple, like a couple different angles, like, Red light cameras, just in like in a more free society, even a more like a libertarian society, is there a place where they would actually, you know, sort of make sense and not be an infringement upon our rights? Didn't and, you uh, have someone on that talked about this? That it's like uh, even the way the timing of it, it, like they make it so that yeah, it's, you, they, you're going to get caught even if it was like a yellow and you should be able to go. I might have. I don't and, know. I have uh, a terrible memory. Yeah, they they cut the time. 
with these people, like if a red light's supposed to, or a yellow light's supposed to last six seconds and you're, you're basically used to a yellow light lasting six seconds, yeah. they cut it to three. So you'd be kind of in the intersection and the camera would snap your license plate and then you'd get a ticket. So, it's a revenue generation. Thing. Yeah. I mean, like everything else. I mean, even when I was taught to drive, it's like, well, if it's yellow, you go, you don't just slam on your brakes, you know, no. you want to you speed up. That's and what, it's, I mean, I've seen, I don't know if this is true or not, but like I see things about other countries, like powers out and the lights are out and everything. The cars go more orderly and shit. It's like, I don't even know, like when I'm trying to drive to work at six in the morning and there's nobody on the street. Like when you think about it, what is the like only government apparatus that is more efficient than anything you'll ever see? It's the people writing parking tickets, anything or, um, like today I had to drive uh, down 71, the highway kind of by Cleveland. So once you get closer to the city, there's cops timing at least every two miles. And that's all. What is it for? Is it really for safety? No, it's for revenue generation. Anything that the government can do to take your money, they're, they're going to be good at that. But that's all they're good at. I've always been so tempted, like when they pull you over and like, do you know why we pulled you over, sir? Like a revenue a generation. Fuck, yeah. yeah. <laughs> fucking asshole. I've never had the balls actually say it, but that's why I'm like revenue generation. Yeah. 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 They, they don't even, the last few times I've been pulled over, they don't do even you, like try. They're just like, yeah, a, hold on. A lot of these big cities that have a lot of Uber drivers and shit are like really upset. They're not getting as much DUI money because that's a big racket. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that that was. I mean, that yeah, that's not about keeping roads safe. Those no, are about, that's about yeah, money. generating revenue. Yeah, the one that's article I was reading about the red light camera said Chicago, the, the way they phrased it, they Chicago had earned, earned because Chicago earned this money taking it from you, uh, six hundred million dollars from red light cameras over a five year period. Holy shit! Have, have you guys ever been busted by one? Nope, not by a red light camera. I got, um like one of those speeding cameras, you know, that oh, they, they, they have those in Virginia, I think they, they, this was five, six years ago. Um, and, and Ohio, I think actually outlawed them, but I, I paid it for some stupid reason. I'm yeah, I got busted by, by a red light camera when I lived in California. So that was 10 years ago, probably. And, uh, I was, I made a right on red. I didn't even like see it go off or anything. I just got this, picture of me in the mail going through a red light looking like an idiot where was and this it was in california Riverside, you're not allowed california. to go right on red in california i guess not there i, I don't know i i can't remember the de- the details of it or maybe i thought maybe looking back at it, i thought i made a right but i didn't and yeah, that's what it was i thought i th- so, Left so, on so, red, so i fought you know, it <laughs> yes yeah, so, this, this is what it was so Straight i fought it red. so i because i thought i was making right on red and uh so i, I, drink I, I go- it and drive too i know so I, I go, I go in to to fight the ticket, and uh, they were like surprised I was there. Like no one ever fights these. So, like we have a video of what you did. I'm like, what do you mean you have video? Like, yeah, you could have seen it. You just have to go to the website that was on the thing we mailed you. Like there was no website on the thing you mailed me. And I look at it like there's a website right there. Go <laughs> here to see the video. So they take me in this back room and show me the video of me going right through a red light. I'm like, all right, okay, you got me. <laughs> so I, I had, I think I've had one, maybe two speeding tickets, two warnings and one where I got pulled over. My registration was expired. I didn't realize, but it was, it annoyed me. Actually, I only had one speeding ticket, two warnings for speeding and one. And now this, uh, this registration thing, it was a female cop. I feel like they give you a harder time. The results, because there was also another male cop that I, I didn't stop at a stop sign, and he's like, "Dude, did you not see me there?" I'm like, "No, man." It's a very sexist, <laughs> it's a very sexist like, remark. Right, well, he's yeah. like, "For now on, stop at the stop sign." I'm like, "All right, I'll do it." Yeah. You saying you saying women shouldn't be cops? I think they feel like they have to be tougher, or they. Well, have that to seems like, like a huge generalization from someone who's gotten <laughs> one speeding ticket in their entire well, life. Well, this so this one is for registration. She was behind me. Knows my registration was suspended. <laughs> yeah, you've had four but, encounters. But she she told me she's like if. You, you know, if you go pay, f- <laughs> renew it and go to court to like throw it out and whatever. I'm like, I don't got time for that. I'm going to take a day off from work, go there and argue yeah. some bulls- Like, fuck that. I would pay the goddamn money. But 
Yeah, like you said, everything's revenue generation. But when we started the show, I was saying like, I hate goddamn voters. So the one article I was reading, and I always wonder like, why are people supporting this? Um, all the, the cops out timing and giving you tickets, these red light cameras. The one article said 70% of people support red light cameras. 70. What? 70. What the Why? fuck is wrong with people? I think just <clears throat> normal <throat> jackass is like, oh, it's, it's for safety. And, and they give it no more critical thinking than that. You can say anything is for safety. And these are the people that probably don't care if uh, cops stop and frisk you walking down the street for no reason. It's for safety. It's for safety. Would you want to be safe? So, so I hear people say like people do dumb things when they're afraid. Like they're like the planes hit the towers and they like vote away their freedom. Give it up. Give it up. But I'm trying to think back. Like I was like, you know what? Fuck those terrorists. I'm going to join the army and go kill them. It's like, I guess I'm a different type of person. I'm like, I'm not afraid. I'm not going to vote away my rights. I'm going to go shoot some motherfuckers. <laughs> but when I, when I got a more well, better kind of, you, understanding. You kind of voted away your rights, just uh, your own rights. When though, I got a more better there, understanding right? of what was going on, I realized that wasn't the right <laughs> course of action to take. And that, uh, you know, it was blowback for shit we did. Um, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but before 9-11, you could actually go. And if someone was flying into town to meet you, you could go and just wait at yeah. the gate for them yeah it was like awesome. oh hey you get off the plane like hey how's it going you're right at the gate no i don't know no chance yeah, Rico, that's I, back I, when like like airports at least in pittsburgh used to be so much so many more like bars and restaurants and stuff yeah because like a whole family would come back and hang out and you know, yeah. then whatever the, Rico, this is a family this is member goes when i was in college somewhere. still you could still be well at the first few years you could still Rico, i know i know i was with you in 11 odie were you at penn state then I was in the dorms. Yeah. Oh, okay. Actually, I was not at Penn State. That but one kind of TSA related thing. Uh, when I just got married in Ireland, a friend of ours came over in this big gallon, like Ziploc bag full of like little whiskey bottles, like the, you know, the tiny ones. He's like, yeah, TSA, you can only have three ounces of, out of liquor or no of liquid he's like but it doesn't matter how many so <laughs> well actually it does i think or no he had a giant bag it's like, like each little thing bag. was yeah. only so much i thought you were only allowed to have like one ziploc bag full of three ounce maybe just that well, but these- it, was, it was a gallon bag and we drank them all and then <laughs> while we were in ireland he filled them back up with irish whiskey so he could fly back and drink them on the way back to America. I, I remember probably our first or second year, like Sam told us he was flying somewhere. <laughs> he took a 24 pack of Budweiser on the plane. Yeah, I was with him. I, <laughs> I used to do that with him before. This is before nine 11. You would, <laughs> you would fill your backpack Ow. full of beer. You'd get on the plane. You'd start like pounding beers. And then eventually like the stewards come by and be like, Oh, so you can only drink stuff that you buy on the plane. You're like, okay, well, let me just finish this one. <laughs> pound in more and more. And they, it's like that always sunny they episode where they're trying yeah. to, Oh yeah. The Wade Boggs episode. This is my favorite Wade one. Boggs. That's the best one. Put, put that <laughs> in the show notes. <laughs> just watch that episode. You don't even have to listen to this. But yeah, because the, then they'd come back around and be like, oh no, yeah, you were coming in. Like, yeah, I was just finishing that last one. And, but it was like, no, the goddamn Osama Bin Laden, you ruined it all. <laughs> Well, if you- I had no idea. You could actually bring like a case. Like they obviously didn't want you drinking it on there, but they weren't going to stop you from bringing it. And on. hey, you know what Osama bin Laden would love for us to do right now? Go to war with Iran. So don't do it. Don't do yeah. it, Americans. Do you think he's really dead, Howie? Yeah, yeah. I think he was dead way before we said he was dead. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. I, I, yeah. That's a whole other tangent we could go down sometime. But you join the Lions of Liberty Pride at Lions of or. Sorry, I'm, I'm just Mick Williams. That one, patreoncom slash of Liberty, where we have our show called Conspiracy Corner, where we talk about Bigfoot and all kinds of other crazy conspiracies. And when we uh, vote on what we should talk about next, y'all should vote for the Nexium sex cult. Guarantee you. Ah, Clint, Clinton links and everything. <laughs> what's the? Uh, uh, was that Smallville? Yeah, yeah. that dude, girl from Smallville. Yeah. She was one of the main like get women to join and i used to watch that show she, the, the, there was, she got convicted that go to trial she pled, i think i don't know it's good for her um because uh, i mean if what's that you know the school scandal thing that chick that pled felicity huffman 
She's she's yeah. got to make out the best. Everybody else is fucked. Oh, she's yeah, way smarter than uh, Aunt Becky. Aunt Becky is. You do be not want to be the last time. one to plead. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna make an example out of her. Man. That's crazy that she could go to jail. Oh yeah, for a long time. Maybe she could go to jail. All right. <laughs> I, lo- I love that jingle, by the way. Yeah, well, Q Odie saying the fastest growing game show in America. It's been on fastest it- growing podcast game oh, show. I'm not trying to like steal Steve Harvey's. It's, it's been on this exponentially uh, traje- exponential trajectory for the last three years. I've actually had people like contact me, be be like, "You're wrong, man. That's not even a game show. What are you talking about?" <laughs> people take oh shit way God. too seriously, then. <laughs> well, that's what yeah, I'm talking about. Well, Before the show, we were talking about libertarians, and well, uh, never mind. I, I digress. Well, what were we talking about? <laughs> Is, did Aunt Becky commit a crime? And that's should right. she do right. time? So, <clears throat> what do you guys think? Um. Well, what what was it? So basically, she. There was a um, variety of different things. Some people were paying she, tutors, I think. I think it's corrupt yeah, her, and bullshit, but I don't think it's a crime. It's like a, her, hers was it had to do with um, essentially lying that her daughters were in crew, and there were there was a payment also. She's claiming that the guy I forget the the mastermind behind it all. She's claiming that he manipulated them. And she didn't realize everything that was going on, which might be true. I, I don't know. Who, who the hell knows? But you're just simplifying um, it, though. You own a private institution, and you're like, we're only going to let the smartest people in. But someone's like, here's a million dollars. Well, your daughter's the smartest person. She yeah. can come in. Like, so, like where's where's the crime? They're, they were bribed. They're letting her in. They're doing, who is – I mean, it's – I, I don't even they, know. They, I, they can let in whoever they want. I haven't read <laughs> enough to, to see what the actual charges are. If because none of these schools are like completely I'm, private, private. Every all of these schools. I, I'm assuming the crime is she said this was like a charitable donation and didn't and it's not, it's a bribe. And because she said under taxes it's a charitable donation. Okay. So they're probably getting her for that. I bet you well, that's not no, uh, that's then, maybe look this up, aren't you? I don't know if that's true, but that's why I would imagine the government would get you for I thought there was like charges of wire fraud and mail fraud. Like basically oh, yeah. they, after she did not yeah, after she did not plea, they got her for um yeah, mail fraud and which is such wire fraud because fucking nonsense. It's just like, oh, this catch all charge. We can't. We don't know if we can make anything else stick. But you probably use the mail, so we're going to charge you with mail. Don't use the mail, folks. Like, why <laughs> is mail fraud? Like sending something in the mail makes it all of a sudden some huge thing. I never mail anything. <laughs> yeah. Like you already well across the state lines. Do you know what though? As soon as you cross those imaginary lines, man, you can't. Do you know what makes that. me lose my temper? When I, when Mail. someone tells me I have to fax them something, and I'm like, I, <laughs> does that ever happen? Yeah, I'm told that. I'm like, uh, can I scan it and email it to you yeah. instead? And they're like, no, you have to fax it. And I just go like crazy. Like, I can't take it. <laughs> and, and even my mom's like, you could just get a fax machine. They're really cheap. I'm like, it's not the point. Yeah, they shouldn't I be using you. them. It's <laughs> yeah, that's faxes are stupid. I'm not going there, back. There is a uh, there's actually a really cool service I, I use for land investing a lot. It's called. Uh, Oh God, what's it called? Ring now or ring something where you can just scan in and it goes through as a fax. Yeah, that's what I've so done when I've had to do this at this machine. point. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go somewhere with a fax machine. I'm not going to buy a fax machine. It'll circumvent your whatever. It's like buying a fax machine. Then don't, don't you have to have a landline? Well, I guess you can do like e-fax or whatever, but like old fashioned fax, you would need a, uh, an actual landline, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> what a waste of money. I remember when I used to. So, I was, so she was charged. I found her. She was the second indictment was conspiring to launder the bribes and other payments and farthering of fraud by funneling them through singers. That was the mastermind guy through his purported charity. So I guess how he is kind of right. Basically, they didn't pay taxes. Yeah, this is all. <laughs> it's just fancy words for 
you didn't really do anything that bad, but you used the mail and you didn't report it accurately on your tax. So we're going to charge you with yeah, money laundering true. and mail fraud. <laughs> we didn't get our cut. Exactly. It's basically what, what they got mana for. If you're, you're going to pay a million dollars to get your daughter into school, we get our cut. <laughs> yeah. Next time, just build a really small building on campus. Like I dedicate this uh, one person bathroom uh, off the, the sidewalk. Um, yeah. And for that building that you can accept my daughter. Well, wh- why is nobody talking about how, so no one's questioning that she pretended to be, her daughter's pretended to like do a sport to do crew to get in. Cause I'm assuming that, you can get in. So with this is actually with a grades, pretty big right? thing. I read about this. This U.S. <laughs> I think it was USC crew coach was actually like this. The very famous uh, crew coach. He had won a ton of national titles and because he was so successful. He could kind of tell the school, OK, I'm bringing this person in to be on the crew team. Uh, they get a partial scholarship or they have no scholarship. But when he would say I'm bringing them into the crew team. They would just say, "Oh, okay, um, cool." And then so he's winning. He's winning. So who cares? Yeah. So was he getting paid yeah, too? He was getting a cut. Yeah. But if they're still winning, what's the problem? Well, what what he would do is after like they were admitted, he would just forget he, about them. Yeah, but he got enough good people to win. So yeah, he was college is such a freaking scam, man. When is this whole thing? Oh yeah, come that's a big down? thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think it was Mark or no, it was Brian on the last Electric Liberty Land talking about um, like payday loans, like how people go and get money. They need like a thousand bucks over the paycheck, whatever. You get it at a really high interest rate. Think about like, you want to talk about like nefarious loans and like, I, I don't have a problem with payday loans personally, but people getting a loan to go to college for four years to pay $200,000 to get a piece of paper. Yeah. Hey, dude, it's pretty sweet. I guess it's probably illegal, but I'll tell you anyways. So uh, it was probably immoral to take advantage of, but whatever. I did it. So when I was in the army, apparently there was something called like the Soldiers and Sailors Act where credit card companies could only charge you so much interest. It was like five point something percent. And when I got out of the army, all my credit cards were like, oh, you're out no longer that back to regular interest. The Bank of America has never realized I'm still paying 5.9% interest on my Bank of America credit card. And it's awesome. If you got to charge something, it's Bank of America credit card. I, gu- I guarantee <laughs> you that you're going to get an email from them. You think so? You tomorrow. think they listen to Felony Friday? <laughs> Why well, do they you got pay the down interest on it? If you're really motivated, I think when I was first out of college, you get credit card offers all the time. They're like 0% interest for... 12 for, for whatever but yeah and then you could do that and then you get a you keep getting offers and you just be like all right i'm going to transfer my balance to this other credit yeah, card maybe you should do that yeah. but, yeah, but it's already it's still with, so low if you don't pay it off you send up with still so low well I, I just pay off my credit card statement every month so i don't pay any interest but well yeah, I, 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 d- I did put you should do the but four, it's not what i did in college like, should go to the bar on my credit card so. oh uh, the things you could do with fourteen thousand dollars, other than getting married. Oh, <laughs> uh, I shouldn't even think about this. <laughs> Too late now. Too late twice. Well, right. uh, the first what else one. What talk that about much. here? <laughs> uh, well, maybe not still, coming, too, but still it, too it, much. It was c- coming and going. Anyway, the, the first one, the uh, what's it called? Alimony that yeah. costs more than the. Yeah, that's what I meant. Maybe not coming, but going. No, 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 no. We won't have that again. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> good deal. Mo- moving on. <laughs> Actually, what we were speaking about my wife for a second. She went over to her friends last night, came back, and she had this big thing in her hand. I'm like, what's that? She's like, oh, I bought this antique gun. <laughs> Where? Uh, her friend Angela's dad was trying to get rid of some stuff, and I guess my wife had wanted a Mauser for a, a while. <laughs> and so it's like it's funny, like when like wives spend money on things. My wife comes home with like an antique gun. I'm like, oh, nice. Like, does it work? Yeah. yeah. I think he might have like took it off a of Nazi in the war or something. <laughs> so it's probably <laughs> you know, illegal. It's pretty cool somehow, some way. Uh, but back then they didn't really enforce that stuff. So keep records. 
It's all good. It's all good there's now. No, there's no records on. I that, don't know uh, when it became illegal to like when you go to war and not take shit from the people you kill, but <laughs> it wasn't then. It wasn't then. <laughs> Yeah, all these war rules. Uh, maybe these undeclared wars that we're engaging are Dude, getting. You know, what? maybe get rid of the rules and people won't do it as much. <laughs> Not sure when looting and pillaging became illegal during. War. Maybe it should be more awful, just so that we people are like, don't do that. I think it's awful to everyone but the U.S. That's a, yeah, that's the problem. Well, not the problem. I'm happy that we're not getting blown up here. But yeah, we don't experience any of like the bad part of it like the actual getting blown up i bet up. there's people that think we're not even at war yeah there's a lot of people that think we're not at war like most people think we're not at war i would say probably 80 percent of people in the so, u.s think think we haven't been at war for like so growing years. up when i thought i was a libertarian i didn't really think about this war shit like i didn't realize that like the stuff in bosnia that happened i had no idea about any of that or like the, we were like bombing Iraq and starving them and killing millions of babies. I didn't know anything about that. I thought it was like peacetime. And so my libertarian focus is like, uh, people should be able to do drugs. People should be able to like sleep with prostitutes if they want. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I wasn't thinking about war at all. You know, uh, I was looking up for some reason Bolton the other day after you were talking about him and he was in the reserves and there was a quote from him about, like why he didn't want to go to Vietnam or why he was trying to get out of going to Vietnam. He's like, why should I want to go die in some rice paddy or rice field? I've seen that. Yeah. Quote. And it's yeah. like, okay, well you have no problem sending all these other people to their death. You have no problem yeah. killing kids. It's um, pure evil. It's like, how are you a human being? Dude, when Trump first came in office, there was talk that he might like make Bolton the uh, defense secretary. Is that what he is? I don't know, national security advisor. Yeah. But um, apparently, Trump like hated his mustache so much he didn't pick him. So I thought, oh, good, we're safe. But apparently, now, now we got him. I was like, man, I, w- I thought the mustache would be enough. What is the worst position Bolton could have? Would it be national security advisor? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> besides president. Right. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, boldness president. My God, that'll never happen. So <laughs> this lady I got in a fight with at this uh, Cinco de Mayo party the other day, she's been swollen woman. She was saying how great she thought John Bolton was because she wanted us to like go invade what? there and overthrow Maduro. I guess if evil people are on your side, then you like them. And I, I started so, to tell her about like Elliot Abrams' death squads in like Nicaragua and other places. She's like, "Why well, I never heard of this." I'm like, hey, look, so I, I, it. I understand people who are like, you know, it's terrible what's happening in Venezuela. We have to do something. But like, do they not understand like, okay, doing something? What would that be? We send troops in, you know, probably would have to be dropping some sort of semi precise bombs, which are going to kill innocent people. How many innocent people, uh, how many in- innocent Venezuelans yeah. are you okay with killing in order to do what? Like, what's the end goal? You put some puppet in power that we've hand selected that's probably going to do the same exact thing that Maduro has been doing. If you, if you like dark I humor, know. I was kind of, I don't know why I thought of this, but I was laughing about it the other day. I was thinking in my head, like John Bolton wanting to hire, um, uh, what were they called? Who were Eric Prince's mercenaries? Blackwater? What? Blackrock. Blackwater. I, I was thinking like... I, Jason I, Stapleton, wasn't he in Blackwater? Yeah, I was thinking like uh, uh, John Bolton's probably saying, oh, send those mercenaries down there to do this. Because Elliot Abrams had the history of using like the indigenous like people for debt squads. He's like, like, no, we need to use the indigenous people, blah, blah, blah. Then we're arguing like, like this like corporate versus the indigenous. <laughs> like, no, we need we need private mercenaries. He's like, no, we need indigenous debt squads. <laughs> I don't know. To me, it seemed funny if they, they were like arguing about that. <laughs> indigenous death squads is it a crime it's like we need to give money to the indigenous people and their death squads or we can't buy pay american mercenaries i know to me i don't know why i thought of it but it just seemed really funny to me <laughs> don't you think like if they actually wanted to help out venezuela they could somehow work with maduro well here's the thing here's the thing so we all know socialism destroys economies and lives and in the end it ends to like starvation and death but they weren't that far along the road. We put these insane sanctions on them and 
like stop them from using international banking to really like trade with the world and stole a ton of their gold that was like saved elsewhere. If we did that to Canada, Canada would be a freaking mess, like failed. And the thing to me is like, if we let it, them do their own thing, we didn't do this, it would fail on its own eventually. But now anything that happens, they can say it's because of the American sanctions. It's because the Americans did this and it will never be blamed on socialism. It's just like if we were to go in and intervene and overthrow them, we put Juan Guaido and other socialists in power and things don't work out. Yeah. It's all, oh, it's the Americans fall, the Americans, Americans. It's the same reason I like it's, it's even- Vietnam, when we left, the communists took over and it collapsed and now they're a free market economy. Um, but it's, it's even like more complicated. Like North I didn't Korea, realize this recently. They haven't lost the regime because they have the American enemy to fight against. They blame us for everything that's gone wrong and everything we did. And we're trying to ruin them and do this and that. Like we are against socialism, but let's not give them an excuse. Let's not let them be able to blame us for what's going on. I, 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 I think you're right, but I think Venezuela is sort of, is, it was like sort of like the perfect storm for this to happen because I didn't even know this until really a couple months ago, but Venezuela is pretty similar to the U.S. in that it's a country made up mostly of immigrants. So people, you know, it's, but, but when people immigrated there, they stayed like sort of, uh, you know, they didn't integrate together. They stayed separated into, into different pockets. So you have pockets of, People from Germany, people from Italy, people from you know wherever who who, who all went over there. And back when uh, who was the president before Maduro? Chavez. Um, blanking. Hugo Chavez. Chavez. Uh, during the revolution, when Chavez took over, it, I I actually work with people who uh, my company used to you know own uh, gas processing plants down in Venezuela when that happened, and people who worked in those plants. Um, who didn't go with the regime or or still with my company now got kicked out of the country, had to leave their families and them telling the story like of of it happening, like just, just having like somebody you've known your entire life, just all of a sudden, you know, just wall you off and basically say that they're going to kill you because you're not loyal to the revolution anymore. And basically kick you out of your own country. I mean, it's, it's nuts. That's all. That's awful. But yeah, you have this crazy. You have these crazy but, lines but of allegiance. Econ- economics and- wise, though, it was <clears throat> bad before Chavez. They were like people that they were like crony capitalists that were just. It, it was going downhill, but they were benefiting the few like elite. And Chavez came in, and the plundered socialists, or whatever, started going to the people, and actually things got a little bit better. I'm not saying this is a good thing. It wasn't good in either state, but. Um, that's why people liked him. It was corrupt, not free market at all beforehand. And it was terrible. And then he came in and he's like, well, instead of giving the money we're stealing to just the elite, we're going to give it to the people. And I mean, that sucked too. And this socialist Juan Guaido, who we want to make the president is part of that, like previous party who people remember as being awful and terrible. But like the U.S. seems to only conduct foreign policy with the stick. There's no carrot ever. Um, like we could say, "Hey, your country is a total fucking mess right now." Are, are, is anyone disputing this? Like Madero, are you are you disputing your country's a mess? You want to stay in power? You don't want to be overthrown? Mm-hmm. Why don't we start? working together like instead of trying to have a coup and some kind of military intervention where people are going to die like yay you're not really our ideal person to run this country but you are running it for better that, or worse. Would, that would be and awesome so, so yeah. let's like to, see i like to see it so let's try to open some markets let's let's trade a little bit you do this we'll do this like, there's none of that so, ever. So back to reality, though, we're doing we're, yeah. doing we're doing we're doing because people like Marco Rubio in Florida with a large Hispanic population that's fled from their other similar countries get votes in power from doing this. And the military industrial complex that, you know, maybe they don't even want a war, but they want a threat of a war so they could sell more shit and make more money off of us having to be like, well, what if we have to fight in the Middle East and Venezuela and this and that? It's like. That's what it's all about. It's about know, like, it's about power and influence and money. Do you know like how much money like China has probably put into everything in their economy? Because what is it? They haven't fought a war in like seventy years. Not that I want 
to be taxed at the same rate and have it be spent by the government. But hypothetically, if the government did spend the money that they spend on war and things like just yeah, well, every that's, day. That's why China's building these like ghost cities. Yeah. They have all these ghost cities everywhere where no one's in them. Yeah. They're building nuke plants out the wazoo. But yeah, they're not bombing. They're not blowing things up. But still, not to bring this to like Tulsi Gabbard and the other socialist Democratic candidates, but like, I don't want socialism or this bullshit. But if you're going to stop the wars and stop spending trillions of dollars on mass murder, and you want to spend it on shit for the American people, it's like, fine. All right, we got a deal. All right, I don't yeah. like it, but fine. Well, can I we please stop committing mass murder around the world? I, I would vote for her yeah. on the other over any other candidate, I think, right now, including any Republican. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know I about mean, and, and honestly, what, but what people what people like aren't thinking of, like obviously she's terrible on economics, but it's not like if somehow she did get elected president, it's not like her entire platform is just going to get implemented. Right. Um, but, but to have someone who's anti that anti war is president, they can really do some well, things. You know, that's where was, she, she could wield some power. I think it's good and bad when you say her entire policy couldn't get implemented. I think the same way about her foreign policy. There's way too much pushback for the reasons you said. Like, she could be anti-war all she wanted, but then you got all the war hawks like Rubio and, you know, every other goddamn uh, senator or congressman afraid to do anything to check the, these wars. It never ends. I... Like I would, yeah, but, but 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 the Congress didn't start them, I because they don't have, they don't want to take responsibility. I don't think they would have the balls to restart them against the will of the president. Yeah, uh, they're puss. They're you pussies. don't think the, I you don't think the Congress, if Tulsi Gabbard was elected president, you don't think that they would restart the wars? Like if Tulsi or? Gabbard, if Tulsi changed. Gabbard said, "I'm taking all the troops out of Afghanistan and Iraq," I don't think Congress would. Well, look at what happened when Trump said. I don't think the Congress would vote. Yeah, uh, Trump tried to say he was taking troops out of Syria immediately. What happened with that? Yeah, but he could do it. Ah. But he did, but he had, there was crazy pushback yeah. and he, but here's, well, well, what, I don't know what, what happened was, behind what the scenes. I was scenes, trying to say, but, I don't think the Congress could pass a veto proof bill saying, no, we're going in Iraq and staying in Iraq. And maybe as, as Rico brought up earlier, a little conspiracy theory on what happened with the Russ collusion. What if that's when well, they yeah, came to I mean, so by the way, it's like, but by the way, Donnie, we, we got this on you. If, if you go through with this, we're going to pull if it it's out. Like, if it's like Bill Hicks said, you get elected, they bring you into like a smoke filled room and they show you like a video of a shot of the Kennedy assassination you haven't yeah. seen before. And they're like, all right, any questions? Uh, yeah, if, I, if that's the I case, absolutely believe that. But you know what? Anybody who's running in that situation, Tulsi Gabbard, who's been to Iraq and fought in like Anbar province twice, like if someone's going to stand up to that, it's going to be her. Well, the, the it's not going to be Bernie Sanders or something. Even else. if they don't, even if she's not um, persuaded by threats to her, everyone has a weak point. So, so. If, if there's no chance, then do you know what I want? I want the worst policies, the biggest spending, everything. So that it just collapse faster. You collapse See, okay, I, I don't want to collapse. I'm not, my I, I don't want to collapse. Shit. Why do I want that? Yeah, I, I don't want to so, collapse. Odie, and... Odie, you mentioned that word. I, I was confused about it. it. I didn't know what it meant at first. Now I think it means people that think it's going to collapse. Collapsitarian? Yeah. I think I was confused. You've never heard that? No, before? I heard it, but I was confused about it. From what okay. I understand now, I think it's people that think that this is all going to collapse and they're trying to get ready for it. Like, how am I going to support myself and defend my family and my neighborhood when that happens? And they're, they seem kind of like preppers. When I first when I well, first heard it, I thought it was people that are trying to like get it to collapse. I don't I don't I think it's both. Yeah, it might be two subgroups. I think it might, you know, I think it might be both. I, I thought it was like all encompassing of people who are the preppers who think there's going to be a collapse and also who really, you know, kind of want that to happen more quickly. See, Cause there's others. I think, I think I might fall into this camp where I want to wait until the collapse is so bad that it takes out all these institutional like things that we thought could never fail. Cause like before I don't want to be like, 2008 when we just bailed out the banks i want to be so bad it's like uh we can't possibly bail anybody out it's just has to stop and go away you know what though like (laughs) what about what if our country collapsed in some way and 
than all these other countries that we always stuck, you know, our boot on their throat, like Venezuela, where we took their gold and denied them access <laughs> to bank. And they're like, oh, payback's going to be a bitch for you. Well, and, and they, it, it wouldn't though, because you know why? We can defend our we, whole country. We, we can bombs. defend our whole country from any attack with a couple good nuclear subs. That's all we need. A couple good nuclear subs. Nobody can fuck with us. True. All right. <laughs> I heard that from Ron Paul. <laughs> that, that's our defense Is budget. That when you were... maintenance for uh, five good nuclear subs. Yeah, that's all we need, really. <laughs> Was that when you were a page taking a piss and Ron Paul came in next to you? like, hey, Ron, what do we need to defend this country? <laughs> Five nuclear subs, Howie. <laughs> That's all we need. Dude, I, I still remember I was in uh, – I don't, do you guys know who Ron Dellums is? They used to call him Ron no. Red Dellums. I think he might be like the mayor of Oakland now. But uh, I remember sitting in his office talking to him for like an hour about how we should get out of NATO, and if we didn't, we should invite, invite Russia in because it's like – he explained it's like, you know, if you're a gang, it's not the gang, and you know, we were trying to get peace and this and that. And we were, <laughs> that's how he explained it, but it's like he's either like, we should get out of NATO or invite Russia in. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. I got it. I did disagree with him about a lot of other stuff, but it's so funny. That was a Democrat, uh, like hardcore Democrat telling me this back in nineteen ninety seven. Now Democrats are like, Russia is the devil. There's no um, Russia um, like dove. On foreign policy and the Democratic Party, hardly now any period. No. Maybe Tulsi Gabbard is one, but you could probably count non-interventionists, non-war hawks, both parties on one hand. So question to you guys. I know we don't need to get into the weeds of like how Roger Paxson would never support Tulsi Gabbard. But besides that, if we're just looking at Democrats that are anti-war, um, Tulsi, she puts it first and it's a big thing. But – Voting wise and spending wise, Bernie Sanders has voted against less military spending and against less like involvement. And he's the one who brought forth this thing for us to stop the madness in Yemen. Like, obviously, I don't like hardly anything he says, but he's kind of in anywhere too. He doesn't put it at his forefront and it's not like his thing. I, I think he'd roll over for the deep state, but I don't know. What do you guys think? He has voted for less military funding in Tulsi Gabbard. And he's supported this get out of Yemen thing. He like put that through. I know. Yeah, I, I don't trust Bernie at all. I, I, Me yeah, neither. I, I think you have to be very outspoken and very uh, have a lot of conviction. And Bernie doesn't seem to have that with foreign policy. Yeah, Bernie got up there on stage with Hillary and said, "Let's stop talking about the emails." Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I think he's a grifter. He's a, I think he's trying to make money. I don't think nothing. he wants to be president. I think he's going to write another book and make another million dollars after this. He's a piece of crap. Here, here. <laughs> All right. Well, well, we didn't talk about much criminal justice stuff, but uh, th- just one more quick thing. One more is it a crime uh, before we before we say goodbye here? Let's talk about nunchucks. <laughs> In Arizona, if you guys saw this article, but apparently I don't know, like if it's illegal in lots of states that you can't have nunchucks. Is it? Is I, it I defined? It That's what I was wondering. This is nunchucks. Uh, is is nunchucks defined in their uh, penal code, like per state, like what a nunchuck is? Because it could be two sticks a- attached to each other by you know whatever. It's a homemade nunchuck. I, I don't know um, how they had it banned. The, the way that they got it, that they got it, they appealed it, and it was over overturned to make to overturn the non the nunchuck ban was they used the uh, what is it the DC versus Heller yeah. in order to overturn it, um, which is uh, affirming individuals' right to possess a weapon. That was both common use and typically possessed I, by law. I don't see how that, nunchucks are yeah, typically possessed I, by law abiding. I don't see how that uh, ruling really applied to nunchucks. <laughs> Michelangelo. Neither do I. Now that I read it, are there really are, are nunchucks in common use? <laughs> well, no. So, so nun- nunchucks. Maybe they should be. I don't nun- know. Nunchuck sounds funny and it's kind of ridiculous. But let me tell you about something serious. <laughs> so, <laughs> in Vir- in Virginia, we have very good gun laws. I have a concealed carry. I have a concealed firearms permit i can carry a concealed firearm but i can't con- what percentage of the time i, I, do I you cannot carry? carry a concealed large knife 
And it always bugged me. It's really? like, cause it's not, it's not a concealed weapons permit. It's concealed firearms permit. So it doesn't cover knives or things. So I can have a loaded gun that nobody could see, but I can't have a big knife because a lot of counties of Virginia have rules about, you know, spring assisted knives, knives with blades this long. It's not, I'm like, you know what? Nobody cares about knives rights. No one's ever talked about knife rights. They only <laughs> care about the guns. And that's it. And it's, to me, it seems like a travesty. And this nunchucks things, it's the same thing. It's a, a weapon other than a firearm. Like people care about gun rights, but they don't care about any other kind of weapon or any other kind of piece of defense you might have. And I even, I had bought, it was a foldable kind of pocket knife, sort of, but uh, it had a, like a thing on the end so I could break my windshield if I was in a car accident. I had a seatbelt cutter and it was awesome. Then I realized, oh, the oh, nice. blade on this is way too long that in most counties of Virginia, this would be c- considered illegal because if it's not, if anything, any weapon that's visible, if you get in your car, now it's like, oh, now we can't see it. Now it's a concealed weapon. You can't have that. And it's like, what, holy shit. What kind shit. of penalty? Like if, if you if you were caught with a knife that was too long, like what, would, like any idea what I kind of time? I assume it would, would be like, the same thing as if you were considering a kid sealed firearm without a permit, which would be like, wow. uh, but it, that's the thing. To me, it's like, it always bugs me. It's like, no one gives a shit about knife rights. But this whole nunchuck thing, it's the same. And in, I don't know if you guys yeah. have seen now in Britain, since they don't have guns and everyone's still killing everybody, now they're banning all these knives. And I just saw this, they had this like, uh, they had confiscated a, a horde of things that seemed to be like kind of like swords and knives and stuff. And I was looking, I'm like, dude, there's like a spoon and a butter knife in that picture too. Like really? Are you serious? <laughs> and it's like people in Britain now, you can't buy like a butter knife without an ID. And it's Are you serious. So if somebody has like an ax in Britain, they could like yeah, take out the, the, whole, the whole thing is it's fucking and disgusting. It's like you need to attack. Why are people want to kill people? Why? What the hell is going on there? It's not a weapon. You don't need a specific type of thing. If someone wants to kill someone, they're gonna kill someone. That's that's the issue, not weapon. Yeah, it's funny. You, it's not funny you say that, but I was just thinking about that recently with this latest school shooting. Like it really hit me, just like how off base this whole discussion is. I mean, it comes back to guns. It comes back. We're talking about. You know, we we need to have you know armed people in schools, and sure, we, yeah, we I think we probably do need that as an answer, a better answer than you know banning guns everywhere. But I mean, the core of the problem is we got kids that are so psychologically screwed up that they're willing to do that, and if, if there's oh, the ones that do it. I mean, that's that's one thing. That's horrible. But how many others are out there that are just like thinking about doing it? And then they're taking this pain throughout them through their entire life. It's I mean, it's the root of the problem is the fucking schooling. Ban the schools, that's not the, problem. the guns. Yeah. Like ban schools. No, but one thing buy your t shirts, ban one, schools at Lions of Liberty. Is, <laughs> ban schools, not guns. Yeah, I'd buy one. One thing that is interesting though with this last shooting, because they didn't talk about it much on TV, and the reason is one of the shooters was a transgender well, she's for us yeah, people to live in reality, she was a girl who thinks she's a man. And the other one was a gay dude. And they kind of just like, okay, let's not really talk about this one. But yeah. it, I, the, the thing that I was wondering about, so the girl that identifies as a man, does that mean they get to keep saying it's all male shooters? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm not going to touch that one. I'm not going to touch I'm just that. wondering. I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm just... It's it's weird, though, because uh, I, I heard that like a week a week after the shooting, I heard that. Yeah, none of that was publicized in any of the, you know, the media reports after the shooting. Nope. It didn't fit the narrative, I guess. No, and it, it's all about narrative. It's like, it's it's a religion. You tune in, listen to televangelist Rachel Maddow here. Who's good? Who's bad? What do we need to do? I don't know. When's the last time that either of you watched Rachel Maddow? Oh, the day after the Mueller report came out. I wanted to watch her cry. <laughs> I know, I know, Rico, I know. Rico doesn't watch. He's, no. he's watching. Whenever Hannity. something happens, like Trump winning the presidency or the Mueller report coming out, I like strictly watch MSNBC and CNN going back and forth. I just want to see how upset they yeah, are. That is a good time. <laughs> Love it. I should start uh, following that policy. It's pretty funny. Watching Rachel oh, Maddow, like when something bad happens uh, in her world. Uh, are you still tuning into Hannity to get no, your uh, daily no, dose of breaking I news? Watch, I only watch that after like <laughs> to watch him gloat over stuff like the Mueller report, but he's such a, a neocon and a Trump apologist too. Hannity and Maddow are the same, same thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, just partisan as you can be, there's no like critical examination of their own parties. So I, I can't really take it. I, I wonder how much time that, that they have left that those type characters that the cable news stations, like how much time do they really have left because our generation, I mean, you guys are what generation X or whatever. I have no idea. I right? think uh, I so. Know. So there was this Generation X, and what was after us? The millennials. I don't know. Millennials. But I'm so like people kind of have started been talking about some this in between generation, which I think I followed. Then there's like, Generation Z we're, we're, after millennials. No, there's this in between where it's like people we grew up without like these technological things, but we got them when we were young enough, so we kind of identify yeah, with yeah. both. We can understand the old people that know what the fuck is going on, and the young people that had all the shit. Yeah, like yeah. I, I don't think kids are going to grow up and watch cable news. They they don't yeah, watch. Yeah, so the, TV the point period. being, like people people who are forty five and younger are not watching that shit. Like I don't think as, as far as I don't know anybody who's like watching it regularly who's forty five or younger, nah. and they're not getting any new viewers. Like nobody is like other than in airports when you have to watch CNN because it's forced upon you. So yeah, how much longer can that shit continue? How bad are CNN's ratings when they buy times like they basically pay all the airports and the hotels to have them on and their ratings are still a distant third. They're they're reaching hundreds of thousands of people every day just through that. And they still can't like does no one watch CNN ever except that they're at an airport. So, I mean, Joe Rogan has way better ratings than any show on CNN. Oh yeah, but is that going to help Tulsi for going on for a second time or not? No, I don't think she has any chance. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so either. It's all about fundraising. Whoever is going to be getting the big donors is going to be the one. They're they're going to decide who's going to win. So who do you guys think the Democrats going to be? I think it's going to be Biden now. I think he's. They, they've tried to slam him as much as they can with all the you know kind of groping things and. <laughs> yeah, I think he's been hurt by that as much as he's going to be hurt by it, unless something else comes out. You see, I think he's weathered that storm. Do you know who I think it's going to be? I think it's going to be Hillary. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I don't I really think so. I, I, I think it's going to be a woman. I, I'll, I'll go that far. But I think... A lizard woman? <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly think that the, the CNNs and the MSNBCs are kind of waiting... Yeah, if, if if you've noticed, like you're not seeing a lot of Biden coverage right now. I think they've realized that the, he's not the ticket. Um, I mean, they're they they're killing Beto O'Rourke's campaign. Like every gaffe that he does, they trash. If it's him. not Hillary, it's he, gonna he be no Stacey chance. Abrams, the woman from Georgia. Yeah, she's connected with a lot of the like deep state like organizations and things, giving oh. speeches to like Chatham House and everywhere. Oh, she, she would not. Yeah, could be. She could be not. Barack Obama's husband. <laughs> <laughs> Barack Obama's husband? What? Yes. Michael? Michelle, oh, Obama. I mean, Michelle Obama. Oh. oh. <laughs> Have you seen all the pictures of her? It looks like she has a giant cock. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Google it. You'll see what I'm talking about. I'm not going to Google that. I don't Let's feel take like your it. word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if like the NSA is like, lines literally becoming a problem. Let's see what they're Googling. It's like <laughs> Michelle Obama, giant cock. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're no threat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, this has been fun, guys. We've been going for a while here. But, uh, I think we talked about some felonies a little bit, a little bit of crime stuff, mostly international politics, <laughs> but it's a good time. <laughs> the usual. Yeah. But uh, thanks for coming on. And uh, you guys want to do a, a group sign off for Felony Friday? Uh, do you know how to? Keep your head up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll say from, uh, from Rico, <laughs> from Howie, and from uh, myself. Uh, we're signing off. Keep your head up and the fire's burning.